Welcome back. I want to wrap up tonight's show by taking a moment to talk about my friend Ed Schultz. As many of you know, he passed away a week ago. I only got to know him a little in the past couple of years that he's hosted the evening news here at RT America. But he was also he, he was always nothing but but kind to me. And, and I felt like I I knew him much better than maybe in our person to person conversations, because when I was first waking up politically in my early 20s, he was right there on Air America. I was I was touring the country, driving thousands of miles a year from comedy gig to comedy gig. And Ed, Ed was there with me in the passenger seat, coming, coming with hours of, of news and commentary a day. Then he moved to MSNBC, but even that proved too restrictive for the big man. They wouldn't let him say a lot of the things he wanted to. As he stated in later interviews, some of them just a, a few weeks ago, MSNBC told him what he could and could not cover. And ultimately, it cost him his job there. He was a longtime friend and supporter of Bernie Sanders. He gave him a platform many years before a lot of people knew his name. He was a small senator from Vermont long before he was running for president. Ed was there giving him a platform, talking to him on his radio show, on a TV show. And Ed and his crew were actually there at Bernie's house the day he was announcing his run for the presidency. It was, a, it was an event to behold, right, as any presidential announcement is. As Ed tells it, he was five minutes to airtime when he got the call from the head of MSNBC who told him they weren't going to air it. It's not going on. We're not doing it, Ed. Ed explained the network was in the bag for Hillary. And even at the beginning of Bernie's presidential run, they knew that they, they had to cover it up. They had to paper over it. They had to not let Bernie Sanders be seen by the American public. And therefore, they forced Ed Schultz out of his very popular television show. But he spoke out when others weren't brave enough. He spoke out against the Keystone Pipeline, against the Trans-Pacific Partnership under Obama. One of the largest, the TPP was and, and you know, could still one day become one of the largest corporate takeovers ever imagined. But MSNBC and the other cable ne news networks never covered it, never covered it, except for Ed Schultz. As Media Matters reported, during an 18-month period, CNN and Fox News each mentioned the TPP during two broadcasts. MSNBC's Ed, Ed, The Ed Show discussed the trade agreement on 71 broadcasts. But the TPP was mentioned on the network's other evening programming only twice, once by Ed Schultz on a different show. After that, after covering the Trans-Pacific Partnership, after interviewing and giving a platform to Bernie Sanders, Ed Schultz was canned. MSNBC couldn't have that, couldn't deal with it. They knew Hillary was such a weak candidate who didn't speak to the American people, and, and they didn't want anyone competing with her. So Ed was forced out. Yet because, you know, because it, was, it was good for ratings, they gave endless coverage to Donald Trump. No problem there. No problem with covering Trump 24-7. They propped him up and handed him the presidency. Our corporate media in this country is a disgrace. And apparently our oligarchy is so weak, it can't handle dissenting opinions. But Ed Schultz was strong enough to keep speaking out. Thank you, Ed, for seeing through the bullshit, for cutting through the propaganda. Thank you for helping to wake up so many people to the reality of our world. Thank you, Ed, for speaking out against MSNBC and the other fake news networks that try desperately to keep everyone dumb enough to just follow along and get in line. Thank you, Ed. I'm going to close out tonight with a piece of my interview with Ed a couple of years ago on the first episode of Redacted Tonight VIP. This was before Trump pulled out of the TPP. It was before Trump was even elected. And without the coverage from Ed Schultz and others, it's quite likely the TPP would have gone through without a whimper of protest. Anyway, that's just one example of how important voices like Ed's are and how, how much important work he did. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this look back with me and Ed.
Ed Schultz, thank you for being here. Lee, it's always good to be on the first show, not the, the first, last. The first show, yeah, <laughs> very true. I think I was on Dylan Radigan's last show, so <laughs> it's good to be on the first show. That's, that's very true. Yeah. Um, I first got acquainted with your stuff when I was listening to radio. I was traveling from you know comedy gig to comedy gig, and, and you helped me change my mind on a lot of things, so I, I have you to thank for that. I want to start off by talking about something that you have changed your mind on uh, in, a, in a public way on your, on your show. Uh, the TPP, um, and you, you've done a great job of kind of bringing it to the people's attention, this, this massive trade deal that is basically the, the equivalent of uh, being dropped in a vat of scorpions, I think, and it, it, it kind of amazes me we don't hear more about it. I mean, I mean, how did you make that change, and does it amaze you we aren't hearing more well, about Well, let's, let's talk about changes. I, I mean, I think that people that get roped in on uh, an idea or grabbing the first few things they read without going to the story really right. fall into a trap. Yeah. I made a change on the Keystone XL pipeline. I made it after I did some in-depth research and went to the middle of the country and talked to the people and right. saw exactly what was going on. And I did the same thing with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Mm -hmm. You know, I was an Obama supporter. I am in many regards. Uh, but on this, this is a mammoth mistake by the president. And my move on the TPP, which is now long documented for several years, is basically it circumvents American law. It yeah. really gives the power to the corporations right. to go file injunctions and lawsuits against Americans uh, if they don't make enough money. Show me somebody on the face of the earth who, who's going to say, you know, I think I've made enough money. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, come on. Yeah. These are corporations that yeah. want unfettered access to our markets. They want to knock down environmental laws. They want to knock down all uh, kinds of uh, uh, guidance laws and on how people, they should trade, and it's going to hurt American jobs. And if your people knew everything you're saying, there's no way they'd be for it. They, I'll tell you what. It's, it's been secretive from day one. Secretive, members of Congress. I remember a year and a half ago, uh, I went on Capitol Hill and talked to some Democrats, and I started telling them about the TPP, and they didn't know about it because it was being <laughs> held in secret. I believed that this was wrong for American middle class workers. I believed that this was going to put us on a, a slippery slope to, to lose more jobs to foreign countries, and it was going to hurt labor overall. Yeah. And because labor built this country, labor built the great American middle class. And so that's why I covered it so much. I can't speak for anybody else. I can't speak for uh, why or it was or was not on other shows. I never paid attention to that. In fact, I didn't know that until <laughs> Media Matters had put that out. Yeah. Obviously, I took it as a compliment right. because it I think it's important. It's a huge compliment. It's a huge compliment. Uh, you mentioned jobs, which this is going to uh, ship jobs overseas, as NAFTA has. Uh, another thing that is undercutting jobs is, is technology. And, and this could be a positive thing in a certain sense. A, a White House report came out uh, this week saying that if you earn $20 an hour or less, there's an 83% chance in coming years you will lose your job due, due to automation. That 83% chance. And I want to flip the paradigm here. Obviously, it's horrible to see people lose jobs. Shouldn't we be trying to get to a point where that technology helps workers work less and make the same amount or make more rather than it all going to the CEOs? So shouldn't the goal be to get to as few jobs as possible and have people work things they want to do, things they want to enjoy their lives with? Yeah. Well, the animation is, is one thing. And there's no doubt there's been an attrition in the manufacturing industry because of the outsourcing and the poor trade policies. But there's also been a reduction of funding mm -hmm. and opportunities for all Americans, especially minorities, when it comes to educating workers to the point where they can make the automation right. or they can compete with the automation. That right. is where I think we're missing a lot. We continue to cut, cut, and cut and come up with new ways to hurt American workers than to broaden our horizons and raise the middle class in this country. And so where we, we've always been able to keep up with technology. But now we're losing that game. We're losing that game, and you're seeing this income divide because of a lot of that. But yeah. if we, we pour into education, we pour into new technologies that the workforce can match all of that, we wouldn't be looking outside our borders for high-tech operators and high-tech workers. Thank you, Ed, for joining me and talking about this, uh, these important topics. Lee, really good to visit. Thanks so much.